All right, Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. Where Max go? It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that is given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made, excuse me, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's look at uh, let's look at what we talked about last week, right? So last week we were talking about a prophet. His name was Elisha, right? And Elisha had just seen his master go. His master's name was Elijah. So we've been talking about Elijah for a while. When he saw Elijah go, remember Elijah went up in a particular way. Elijah went up, you know what I'm saying, in a in a in a whirlwind of fire and a in chariots. That came from the most high God. So it was, something, it was a miracle. It was something that ain't nobody ever seen before. Right? And he ended up being taken up into a whirlwind. And the book say taken into heaven. And we talked about heaven. A lot of times we talk about heaven today. We've been, we've been made to believe and kind of see heaven as like the place where God dwells. And, and the streets are paved with gold. Right? And all that stuff. Well, that's not how the book, is, that's not how the book uses heaven. When you see heaven in the book. It's just saying sky. It's another way of saying sky. Like you're not going to look in the book. You're not going to see the word sky. Yeah. Right. So the word heaven is used. It's just think of it as just sky or the, or the place above. So it could be talking about where God dwells, but it could also just be talking about the sky. And it also could just be talking about outer space. Yeah. Right. So think of heaven as just the place above. Right. You kind of like the area above is kind of what the heaven is. So he got he got pushed put up into the sky. Right. And so it was some prophets. One of the things that Elisha and Elijah always ran around with was what the book, we read it a couple of times, if y'all remember, the book calls them the sons of the prophets, right? So they're prophets. In other words, it's a, it's a family of prophets. It's a lineage of prophets. And so they kind of run around with them. So you remember after Elijah got taken up, the prophets came and the prophet said, hey, we should go look for Elijah. I mean, because perhaps... He just got put over there on a mountain because he got taken up in a whirlwind. Maybe the whirlwind took him up and spit him out over the mountain. So they said, you know what? We should put together a search party and let's try to find him because Elijah was a great man. So at first, Elisha was like, nah, we good. We don't need to do that because Elisha know what happened. Yeah. Right? So Elisha was like, nah, we good. Trust me. We good. And then the prophet started talking to him and they made him feel ashamed. You can just imagine the type of stuff they were saying to him. Like, wasn't that your master? You don't even care? He probably out there hurt, waiting for somebody to save him. So eventually, Elisha was just like, man, all right, go ahead and search. But they couldn't find him, obviously, because Elisha already knew, right? The Most High God took him. So after that, um, Elisha ended up getting a double portion of Elijah's spirit. So we started to read a no number of stories about Elisha and the great things that he had done. This includes, right, he, he took a woman who was uh, in poverty, right? Gave her a, uh, uh, a couple uh, kind of like vases, you know what I'm saying? But uh, a couple, you know what I'm saying? Things that could hold oil and pour oil in there and just kept on pouring oil in there, right? So she had one thing of oil. She just kept pouring oil into all of these containers. And all of a sudden she had multiple containers filled up with oil. So that put her in a position. He told her, he was like, all right, just go take that and go sell it. Yep. Right. Then another one that he did, one of the, the one the where we kind of left off is he was going back and forth to this town. This lady said, hey, you know what I'm saying? If you coming back and forth, why don't you, you know what I'm saying? Why don't you come chill with me and eat? You know what I'm saying? So she fed. He like, no. Nah. Then she ended up feeding him. And then he fed him. This, that, another. Go ahead. What? That's right. She made a little house, a little bed for him in the back of her house. Right. 
And after that, he is like, all right, what can we do for you? His servant was like, mm, I know one thing. She ain't got no kids. I know she won't kids. He's like, that's what we're going to do. So he prayed to, to have her have her get pregnant. He told her, you're going to get pregnant. And then she ended up being pregnant. Then her kid grew up a little bit, and then her kid died. So she went looking for him. She was like, I didn't ask you for no baby. And I told you, don't lie to me. Right? Then he didn't know nothing about it because the Most High God kept it from him. He went up and he revived the, the, the child. But he revived the child the same way that Elijah revived the child. If you remember, when we talked about Elijah, Elijah revived the kid too. And when he did it, he laid flat on the kid like this. Right? Just laid on the kid flat like that until the, the kid's skin started getting warm. Until the kid came back alive. He did that. So Elisha did the exact same thing to her son. Right? So it's just chronicling all of these miracles that he's doing yeah. and how they're very similar to the stuff that Elijah was doing just to show that he had a double portion of Elijah's spirit. So we're going to continue on with that theme because it goes on for a few more <laughs> chapters. So right now we are in second, second Kings chapter five, second Kings chapter five. We're going to start at verse one. <laughs> Second Kings chapter five, verse one. Now Naaman, captain of the host of king of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable, mm -hmm. because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he also was a, a leper. Right? So now you had Naaman, and Naaman was a mighty man of valor, right? But he was also a leper. He was a great man because he was the one that was winning the wars for Syria. So if y'all remember Syria, Syria is up north, right? So if you look at our land, right, Syria is going to be up here. Let me go ahead and put my pen on here so y'all can see what I'm doing, right? So Syria is up here, right? So Naaman... He's running stuff, and he's able to conquer land for Syria. So at this point, he is known around all of his land. But the problem is he's a leper. What does it mean to be a leper? Oh, leper would have been like a skin like a skin issue, right? Yeah, you got white spots on your skin, or yeah. maybe all of your skin is white. All right? So at this, at this time, in this region, we all black. It's black folks, right? So they got these big old, you ever seen somebody with the white blotches on their skin, you know what I'm saying? It's that another, they called it uh, vertilago or yeah, something like yeah, that, right? Yeah. Something yeah. like that, yeah. They could, you know what I'm saying? That's kind of like what a leper might, not. they not lepers, right? Yeah. But that's, if a person had that, we would have to make sure that they weren't a leper. Mm -hmm. And you know, our law tells us exactly what we would do. We say, okay, let's set you aside for seven days. Right. After seven days, let's see if the spot spread or if it's broken open or, you know, all that. We have all our different. If it got hairs, it's different colors, all these different things we would look. And as long as it didn't spread, then we would say, OK, that's not leprosy. But if you see it spreading or you get more then it's like, OK, that might be leprosy. Right. So they, you got to kind of imagine a person that got vertilago. Right. It's like, you know, what I'm saying they got these spots on the skin. Well, he got it. He got the real leprosy, though. So he looking like, man, how do I cure myself of this leprosy? Let's see what happens. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel, a little maid. Mm -hmm. And she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, her mistress, Will God, my Lord, were with the, the prophet that is in Samaria, for he will recover him of his leprosy. So now she know, right? The wife knew she looking like, listen, if he just went to the prophet that's out in Samaria, he'd help her out. Who's she talking about? She's talking about, uh... She talking about Alicia. Alicia. <laughs> right? So she's looking like, yeah, okay, Alicia could help you out. She probably didn't hurt. Listen, Alicia is doing stuff around town that people have heard about. Right? He making a name for herself. So she's looking like, look, I didn't heard about this dude out in Samaria. He could take care of this type of stuff. So let's see what happened. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid, that is of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go to 
go to go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel, unto the king of Israel. Mm -hmm. And he departed and took him ten talents of silver, silver, and six thousand pieces of gold, and ten changes of raiment. Mm -hmm. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman, my servant, to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his of his leprosy. Right? So now the servants went to the king. They, they told the king, yo, it's a prophet out in Samaria. He can get this done. So the king of uh, Syria, since he messed with Naaman, he said, you know what? Get some gifts, get some clothes, some money, send it down to the king of Israel. Tell the king of Israel, yo, heal Naaman of his uh, leopard. So he wrote it to the king of Israel as if the king of Israel was going to get it done. But you got to think about it from a boss's mindset. The boss say, oh, you got somebody on your team that can help me out. I'm going to talk when I'm at work. Right. The position I play, I run, I run my department. Right. So the position I play is usually I'm talking to if I need if somebody on my team needs something from somebody on their team, I'm talking to the boss because they, they at my level. So I might say, listen, we just need your help with such and such thing in my department. Right. I'm not telling you who to send because that's disrespect. Maybe you got it. Like maybe I know of one person that can help me. But maybe you know better than I do, and you might send somebody else. Yeah. So it's like, okay, well, let me just tell you what's going on. Listen, this is the this is what I need solved. I want for you to solve it. So that's kind of how he write it to the king, like, yo, 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 I need so and so done. Will you get this done for me? Right? Keep going. Watch this. And it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter that he rent his clothes. Right? So the king of Israel looked at the letter. He looked like, I can't heal nobody in no darn leprosy. <laughs> you got to, okay, you got to think back. Remember, this is the same people that Ahab had a war with. Y'all remember Ahab was going back and forth with this same group of people. Yeah. Right? So now Ahab is his granddad. And he looking like he sent this this man picking a fight. Y'all remember he picked a fight with Ahab. Remember he sent a message to Ahab like yo yo yo, go ahead and give me your wife. You know what I'm saying? And give me give me your your kids too. And Ahab was like, all right, I'll give it to you, right? D is like, okay. And on top of that, I'ma come down there and I'ma look at everything in your house and whatever I see and I want, I'ma walk out with it. Ahab was like, all right, man, you just going too far. I didn't tell you you can have my wife and my kids, and now you're just going too far. Now you're just trying to start a problem with me, right? So this is how this is how this king looking at it. He looking like, man, y'all did my granddad like this. He looked like you just trying to start some mess with me, right? So at that point, he started to rent his clothes, right? He started to take his clothes. In other words, he started to look like he started to have despair and shame, like, oh, man, what am what is he trying to do? He's yeah. sad about it, right? Yeah. It's breaking him. Let's see what happened next. And it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the, the letter that he rent his clothes and said, am I, am I a God to kill, to make a lie? That is, a, that is man does sent unto me to recover, to recover a man of leprosy. Wherefore, consider, I pray you and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was so when Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he, he sent the king saying, wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come to let him come now to me and shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Right. So then Elisha heard about it and he is looking like because the king of Israel looked like this man just trying to fight. This man trying to he trying to rile me up. He's trying to find a reason so he can start a war with me, right? And then Alicia looking like, what you over there? What you what you so sad about? Huh? Like, what's wrong with you? I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with you. He look, listen, send them to me. I'll take care of it. Because if I take care of it, then the people will know there is a God in Israel. Right? You have to understand that that's always going to be a man of God's purpose. Yeah. It's to give glory to the most high God. That's the sign of a man of God is that he's constantly trying to give glory to the most high God. Right. Let's see. Keep going. 
So Naaman came with his his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. Uh-huh. And Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, go and wash in Jordan seven times and in flesh and thy flesh shall come again to thee. Thou shalt be clean. Right. So now you have to peep the scene. Naaman, the right hand man to the king, the man. Right. He get a message from the king. King sends the message down to the king of Israel. He said, yo, take care of my boy. Heal him of his leprosy. I heard y'all can do some stuff down there. Heal him of the leprosy. King get to freaking out. Elisha like, man, don't freak out. Send him to me. Elisha sends him a message. He don't meet him face to face. You know what I'm saying? He sends him a message like, yo, this is what you could do. This is what you could do. Go down to the Jordan. Right to the Jordan River. You look at the Jordan River. It's that one right here. Right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go down to the Jordan River. Right. We talk about the Jordan River. We talking about this one right here. Mm. We talking about this one right. Oh, let me get my. We talking about this guy right here. Right. So he tell them, go down. They in Samaria. Right. So they could go any anywhere over here. Yeah. Right. Anywhere over here. So he tell them, go down to the Jordan River. Now, you got to understand that. Think of like. Think of like uh, Lake Mead. Right. It ain't that bad. Don't don't disrespect. Me. <laughs> but just think of like somebody from think of somebody coming from like Michigan. Right. Or somebody coming from California or from Utah. Right. And we tell them, oh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Let's go to Lake Mead. They might look at us like, y'all ain't never seen no real lake. Y'all said, that ain't a real lake. Y'all said, like, where I'm from, we got a real lake. That's a mess. Dirty and nasty. Don't nobody want to get in that water, right? Well, that's kind of how Naaman would have looked at the Jordan. The Jordan River was nothing to him. Watch, you'll see. Watch this. But Naaman was raw. And went away and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord, his God, and strike his hand over the place and recover the, the leper. Right. So he's this is what Naaman's expectation. What he knows who he is. He said, man, at least I thought the man would come talk to me in person. At the very least, I thought he would come talk to me in person. He is standing looking at me face to face. He is looking at my skin. He had hit me on the spot. Bow. <laughs> he had called on the name of his, his God. He said, Yahuwah in the name of y'all see these people on the church yeah. on the on the TV. Yeah. Yeah. He telling you about what they do on the TV on the TV. What they say, they sit there. <laughs> By my personal prayer package. Yeah. Right? It comes with the anointing oil, the holy water, yeah. the cloth of faith. Yeah. Right? And if you just pour the holy water and the anointing on the cloth of faith. Let me show you what to do. He called somebody else. Come up here, Max. Let me see. Call somebody else. You got a, you got a limp like there's something wrong with you. So Max, you ain't been able to walk all your life, huh? I want you to stand up right now. And Max, stand up. He stand up. Then he show him on there. Look, he's standing. He's standing. He turn him around. He get the cloth of faith. And he smack Max with it. And then Max starts, oh, oh, oh. go, go ahead. Catch the Holy Ghost. Oh, look at that. Max got the Holy Ghost. Woo! Just like that. If we made a commercial out of this, we have... 30,000 people watching the videos tomorrow. If I made a look, if I made a commercial out of telling Max, you, you ain't walked all your life. Stand up. And he just stand up. Then I smack him with the cloth of faith, the cloth of hope, and then butt start freaking out and going to convulsion. Tomorrow, 30 million people watching. Viral instantly. And people gonna believe it. They gonna listen. I do that type of stuff. These people will be looking here like, oh, where can I send money to support the cause? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? It's easy money to get these people. Easy. It's not even hard. It's easy to manipulate these people. <laughs> but that's not what we in it for. Yeah. That's why Alicia sent the message. He just sent the message. He said, listen. All you got to do is go down to the Jordan, dip down seven times. Naaman looking like the Jordan. I thought for sure this man would come see me face to face. 
here, check out my skin, call on the name of his God, strike me in the spot, and say, you know what? Be healed of leprosy. But that's not how it played out. Watch this. Watch, watch what else name is say. Or not, or not Abana uh, and Farpa, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of, of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in, in rage. So he started to name all the rivers that were better. Yeah. He is like, if I'm going to go dip and, and dip seven times in some water, at least let me do it in some clean water. Right? At least let me do it where the water is good, where the water is nice. I ain't about to do that in the Jordan. I'm messing around. I dip in the Jordan, I might catch another leopard. <laughs> right? She probably, she probably won't be. Come on. I'm right here. <laughs> you just want Uncle Phil to get you out. Come on. Uncle Phil got you. Uncle Phil got you. It's okay. I got you. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to stop playing with your emotions. Let me stop playing with your emotions. There go that daddy. I'm right here. Let me stop playing with them emotions. I'm right here. You okay? So we look at it and name it. Name it is trying to figure it out. Remember, he's a boss. He's like, he's the guy where he's from. So he's trying to figure out why in the world is this man not meeting me face to face and kind of treating me as, as I deserve to be treated. Yeah. He just giving me some run around, go dip in the joy. It doesn't seem real to him because it's not, it doesn't fit his expectations. Yeah. The reason why I'm harping on this is because it's important for us. A lot of times we've been set up to believe stuff about the book. Yeah. And when you learn the truth, it doesn't fit your expectations. Right. I kid you not. I think it was today or maybe yesterday. I saw, a, you know, like on Facebook, they give you like a series of pictures. There's a whole bunch of pictures. You know what I'm saying? And when you make a post with a bunch of pictures, it kind of fit them into a few boxes. Then they give you one box to say 32 more pictures or whatever. Right. So I saw that and I saw the white Jesus on the pictures. You know what I'm saying? And he was washing different people's feet. So the one that caught my eye was he was washing Donald Trump's feet. <laughs> and I was looking like, hey, no way. You know what I'm saying? Yo, you ain't watching no darn gentleman. What, what's wrong with these people? <laughs> right? So then after that, I'm looking, I was like, oh, and he watched Joe Biden. So I was like, oh, I see what they trying to do. Like, oh, okay, you know, if Jesus were here, he wouldn't be political. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I see what they're trying to do. So I keep looking. And I'm like, oh, how did I miss the very first one? He watching this man's feet. He got a big old rainbow pride flag on his lap. Yeah, it is. There you go. So I said, oh, these people are crazy. Yeah. 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 These people are nuts. Because in their mind, what they think is, oh, the world is too judgmental. Yep. Right? Y'all Christians are too judgmental. You don't really know that Jesus would wash everybody's feet. Because you know what they're thinking? Jesus loves everyone. Yeah. Right? And guess how Jesus shows his love? By washing feet. <laughs> In their mind, that's how that work out. Yeah. Right? But that's only because they don't know the scripture. Yeah. So you, you look at that and you walk into it and all you know is that Jesus washed his disciples' feet. And you say he loved his disciples. He also, I've been taught that he loves everybody. So everybody's his disciples. And guess what? The gay guy is his disciple. Joe Biden's his disciple. Donald Trump is his disciple. Everybody's a disciple. Everybody come get your feet washed. But is that how that worked? No. No, 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 no. Now, that was a very special group that got their feet washed. How many of them was it? Oh, at the time. It was 12 in 12, all. Yeah. Right? 12 in all. And one got sent off. Yeah. Right? So we look at it. It's very different. Not all of Yahushua's disciples got their feet washed. Yeah. It was only the 12 that would be reckoned as apostles yeah. that became 11. Yeah. It's a very particular group. And outside of the 12, Judas, who was, who, who was you know, put there to, to uh, set Yahushua up, yeah. outside of him, they were all obedient to the Messiah. Yeah. They all walk, walked orderly to the Messiah's command. Yeah. So then that leaves us with just a few things. You are either under the impression that 
Joe Biden and Biden. Trump and the gay guy with the pride flag, that they are walking orderly to the Messiah's commands, which is error, or you just have a fundamental misunderstanding about what the man came for and what he stands for. Yep. Right? When you talk different things about the Bible, you don't you you can't accept it because it don't make sense to you because it doesn't meet your expectation. That's what we try to do here is to make sure that we can make sure people understand who God is, what he's about, what principles do we have? Who is he? So that way, when, when you hear all this foreign stuff, when people get to talking to you, it's foreign to you. It don't make no sense to you. You're looking like, no, that's not consistent with, I'm familiar with the book. Yeah. These people sit in these churches all they their might. life and yeah. they never know anything about God. Yeah. I refuse. I refuse. I'd be ashamed if somebody said up there, something to me year after year after year, and they can't answer. They can't identify with somebody lying to them about God. <laughs> That's crazy. I would be ashamed of that. That's why we don't play the game. That's why what we do is we make sure people are exposed to the Bible, to the literal Bible, to the literature, to the actual words of the Bible. That's why we read it all the way through. We started Genesis every every time we finished. We made it to Revelation, what, three times? We going from Genesis to Revelation three times since I've been doing this. And as soon as we get done with Revelations, we might take like a couple of weeks to do like little topics or whatever. But as soon as we get done with Revelation, we go right back to Genesis and read it all the way through again. What are y'all doing? Oh, right. We go, we go right through it again. Cause the idea is keep people familiar with the book. Yeah. Right. You go to these churches, they preach the same five to seven sermons every single week. They don't talk to you about forgiveness and grace and faith and hope and and uh and uh loving your neighbor and 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 being kind and your personal finances and 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 uh breaking the shackles of the say of satan those are that's a, that's what they're gonna talk to you about every single week they're gonna fricassee it flip it they're gonna twist it change the message change the way for it to relate pick a new metaphor but it's going to be the same root message every time. And then even in those very basic messages, they get it wrong. Yep. They teaching you the wrong stuff, even in that. So at the end of the day, you walk away and you never really learned anything about God because they didn't spend much time. Man, these pastor, look, let me show you what these pastors do. They sit here and they say um, they always start. They always start super calm and somber. Uh, no, 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 you, you got to start from the beginning. That's what they do. First, you start with announcements. Sister Cheryl was up there. Amen. Bless the church. First of all, I have a few announcements, but you know what? Before, before I get started, if it's okay, I just have to give y'all a testimony this week. This week, let me tell you something. And she always gives you some testimony or something. You be looking at it, it's like, it's a testimony. You in church, and it's a testimony, so you got to clap. But when you listen to it, you be like, that's some super regular stuff. She looking like, so Carson, y'all know Carson. Carson, stand up, Carson, so they can see Carson. He got straight C's this, this year in school. And y'all know why that's important to me, because last year he got straight D's. So that is an improvement over the year. I was praying to God about it all year. And 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 now Carson got straight C's and we praying to God for B's next year. Right? That's just my testimony. I just get everybody clapping this and yeah, go Car good job, Carson. They start giving Carson dollars, rewarding them for C's. Right? Now after that, and it's a mama in the back. I never let my kid get a C. But guess what? Praise God. She's gonna do it. Cause what else she gonna do? That's a testimony. That's groupthink. You listening to this stuff and like this is madness. What you know it too, and you saying it to you. Madness, what you talking about? This ain't even regular stuff. You, I don't know if that's God that gave you that, but that's what you thinking. But you know what? You in church? It's a testimony. Praise God. Good job, Carson. Praise God. You got to do it because it's groupthink, right? Then after, and after she get done, she said, "Okay, um, so now this weekend uh, we are doing picnic for Jesus, and uh, anybody who wants to show up will be at." Uh, Cinderella Park, 
uh, and uh, and uh, make sure that you bring fans and bring your own source of water. We will be handing out water, but there may not be enough water. If anybody has extra water on hand, please donate water. You can talk to Sister Cheryl. That is Sister Cheryl. Her phone number is X, Y, and Z. You can talk to her. Right? Then she's going to the next announcement. This, that, another. After she's done with all the announcements, right? Because the, the choir already sung. Everything had already gone down, right? So after right. she get done with all the announcements, then she introduced the pastor. Now, they usually break into another song, you know, a bunch of new songs. And in the in the in the point of them songs, Pastor eases his way up there. Pastor always sneak up there. You know what I'm saying? Like Pastor, you don't even realize Pastor up there because you because you singing, you dancing and singing. You don't even realize. Then Pastor and then Pastor just he's ease eases his way to the podium. And then once he get up there, he starts singing too. He be like, ah, ah, he's singing the song right. And you know it make you feel good when you see Pastor getting into it. Oh, you be looking like oh the spirit moving in here today when Pastor get into it right. So then Pastor get up there and he calm down the music play. He start telling them, he start telling them, you know, calm down, calm down. Okay. Now, church, if the Lord has been good to you, say amen. You know what I'm saying? They always do something like that just to get you going. The Lord being good to you, say amen. 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 Turn to your neighbor and say, it may not have happened this week, but it's gonna happen. You know what I'm talking about? They be like, oh, it's gonna happen. It may happen this week. It's gonna happen. Get all excited, right? You do that. Uh, I want everyone to open up their books. I'm just gonna pick a random book. I'm gonna pick something real, random book. Let's see. They ain't gonna do nothing in the old testament. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be the new testament. <laughs> let me see. Let me get something random in the new testament. Here you go. Uh, I want everybody to open up their books to John chapter 10, uh, verse 22. <laughs> Um, and it says, <laughs> then came, this is how they be reading it too. They be stretching that little bird. It'd be one verse, a whole sermon on one verse. They stretch that thing. And it says, then came the festival of dedication. He ain't read nothing but five words, but he going to pause right there. He going to say, <laughs> Now, a lot of people don't understand that. <laughs> There's a lot of things in your life that your finances ain't right because you ain't dedicated nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let me tell you something. <laughs> your love life ain't in order because you ain't dedicated nothing. <laughs> you got stuff in your life that you ain't set to the side for God. <laughs> yeah, then he gets to talking to you, right? All he's talking about is then came a festival of dedication. He take that and just start freestyling on it. He become a rapper with that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flipping it over and all that. So then he go over. He go into a whole sermon. Yeah. He give you a whole bunch of analogies, a whole bunch of stuff that like kind of motivate you, make you feel good. Then he come back to that, that same verse. And he started at the very be beginning of it. He say, and then he, had, at this point, pastor has preached for an hour. He come back. He say, then came. The festival, he a little more rowdy now after this, you know what I'm saying? The second hour, he a little more rowdy. Then came the festival of dedication at Jerusalem. Huh. Then he stopped again. And he gets telling you, huh, even if you did dedicate something in your life, huh, sometimes it wasn't in the right place. Huh. You had something dedicated, huh, but you were dedicated in Las Vegas. Huh. You had something dedicated, huh, but you were dedicated in Chicago. Huh. You were dedicated huh, in New York. Huh. You were dedicated. Huh. And, and they get to doing all that silly stuff, right? And so you looking at it like, that makes a lot of sense, Pastor. Because we ain't supposed to have the festival of dedication in Jerusalem. That is what it's saying. And we just sitting there stupid in the church. Falling for this silliness. Yeah. He ain't taught us nothing about the book. Man, just make a darn mess with our mental. And he do it over and over. Then he come back. Now we an hour and a half in. Oh, he really excited. He hour and a half in. He didn't preach a good word so far. He know he do it. He know he got. He got the whole front word stand, standing up. Sister Patterson, she all the way in the front. She all the way. She's sitting on the podium going like this, Sister Patterson. With her heels off. <laughs> she got both her heels laid on the floor. Got a hole in the bottom of her stocking at the bottom of her foot. Everybody see it too. Don't nobody care. You know what they say? That's the Holy Ghost. You know what I'm talking about? That's what they look at. Right? So she's sitting there just like this. Right? 
Sister Patterson looking like, oh my goodness. He know when he see sister, when sister Patterson get up and start stomping her feet at the bottom of the altar, let me tell you something. Pastor know he got one. So he go back to it. He always start at the bear. Cause you be looking, it's like, man, we ain't ready for one. Listen, this is how my mind worked. I was, listen, I was stupid because I was sitting in that stuff and I believed it. But my mind always worked a little bit because I know I was looking like, Pastor, we really only read a quarter of a verse and we an hour and a half in. Yeah. I used to be thinking about that thing. Now I was like, ain't, look, there's my mindset. Ain't, ain't my place to question God now. Because that's what I thought I was. I thought, I thought by questioning the silly stuff this pastor was doing, I thought I was questioning God. So I was like, ain't my place to question God now. But I, I know, is he going to start at the beginning of this verse? Because we might be here for another two hours. At the rate that he's going, he only read one word an hour. So I'm looking at, okay, he start off. Then came, this time, oh, he, right, he cooking. The festival of dedication at Jerusalem. <laughs> it was winter. Oh, man, you know he going to do it with the winter. Yeah. See, the problem with y'all is you might dedicate. <laughs> and you might even dedicate in the right place. <laughs> but it's not the right season. <laughs> you might be dedicating, but it's summer. <laughs> you might be dedicating, but it's still fall. <laughs> God told you to rise, <laughs> but you dedicating in fall. You might dedicate, but it's in spring. God told you to sit, but you still springing up. You know what I'm saying? He do all that stuff, and you looking like, goodness gracious, you know what? In the middle of June, it is the wrong season, because it said winter, Lord. And we fall for this stuff. And we sit there, and in our minds, we just got the word of God. Yeah, you feel good. In our minds, we gonna say pastor was preaching that word today. Yeah. God was talking through pastor today. That's what we say to ourselves. That's what we, when we walking out back in, listen, back when I was going to church, you could buy the tapes. You'd be walking out and you'd be yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. My mom be buying the sure tape. Mm, yeah, get the tape. We looking like, oh, I got to play that back. That was a word. We indoctrinate ourselves with this foolish empty teaching yeah. we haven't learned a thing we read through one verse the entire sermon so now if somebody talks to us about god the only thing we have to compare it to is this empty set of pastor sermons that we've got that doesn't really have anything solid in it it's not telling us this is absolute. there's nothing absolute in what these pastors teach all of it is is wishy-washy and vague and up for interpretation. Yeah. And listen, a lot of them are good because they, I, I remember talking to somebody and they talked talk to me about T.D. Jakes. And they was like, I don't feel like what T.D. Jakes says is contradictory to what you teach. So I was like, I, I understand, but I was like, just, I don't know, put on YouTube, go to a random T.D. Jakes. I don't care which one it is. Just go to any T.D. Jakes sermon. <laughs> And let's go through it. It's like, I don't want to go to a random. I was like, all right, well, then let's go to your favorite, like the one you like listening yeah. to. So they went to it, and we sitting there, and we listening to it. And so I'm like, okay, let's go through it. And he going through it, and I'm like, I'm listen, I'm ready. I'm like, I'm about to bust TDJ, but I know he a liar. I know he ain't teaching nobody nothing. So I'm like, I can't wait. As soon as he say something to contradict the book, I'm going to pause it. I'm going to open up the book, and I'm going to show it to you. So I'm listening to the thing, and I can't get it. You know why I can't get him? Because he's not saying anything. Yep. That's how they get us. It's not that, it's not that what they're saying is a lie. It's just that they're not saying anything. They're not saying anything specific, specific. All they're saying is, you know what? God loves who he loves. God will fight for you. Like, if applied to the right situation, then what they're saying is true. Yeah. But you know how they get you. They make everybody believe that what they saying applies to them. Yeah. They imply it. So you end up leaving these churches without learning a thing. And you have expectations now that the most high God is all accepting. That he's all forgiving. That he'll that he'll accept you no matter what you do. Right? Meanwhile, most High God is telling you, 
you cannot be accepted unless you change what you do. Until you repent, you cannot be accepted. So Satan is giving is confusing us by telling us no matter what you do, we accept it, no. which now removes the incentive and removes the urgency to change what we do. And we don't realize that that change of what we do is the key to salvation. We're believing that salvation comes to anybody who calls on his name right. without anything. It doesn't matter what you do. Yep. All you got to do is call on his name and you say it. That's what we've been taught. Mm -hmm. Not realizing that the scripture would tell us that our behavior is the key. That's the entrance to self. That's how you start the salvation conversation is by changing your behavior. And it becomes clear why Satan has attacked that part of it. Why he's, why he's put so many images and so many false teachings in these pastors' mouths yep. to make sure that people are comfortable in sin. I told y'all, I think I told y'all a couple weeks ago, God going God to post on, on, on Facebook or on Twitter, I think it was, you know what I'm saying? Something to the effect of, you know what I'm saying? As long as you feel bad about what you do, that's the sign that the Holy Spirit is working in you. What? That's the bar. So, you know, I know I got the Holy Spirit. So when I was getting drunk the whole time, I was like, man, I knew I shouldn't be doing this. That was the Holy Spirit working me. Mm -hmm. At least I got, they be like, See, it's when you do it and you don't even think about God. That's now that's when you're in trouble. That's crazy. That's the type of voodoo that these people play on our minds. Yeah, yeah. And we sit here and we eat this stuff up. And the reason why we eat it up is because nobody read the book to us. Yep. You hey, listen, if you read the book to us, guess what? We're gonna be like, mm, nah, that can't be it. Like, yeah, pastor, I hear you, but it's a lot more to it than what you talk. Like the feast, like when you understand what the feast of dedication is, yeah. right? A pastor can't sit, get up there and talk to you. Oh, you didn't dedicate this. He can't tell you that. But you looking like, no, nah, the feast, the feast of, the feast, no, nah, the feast of dedication was because the temple got rebuilt in the book of Maccabees. You, nah, you just don't understand, pastor. Right? When he gets to telling you, well, Peter walked out on the water, you know, and sometimes you got to step out in the water of your faith. Yeah. Sometimes it's troubled water in your life, but you got to jump out of the boat and walk over to Jesus. Because <laughs> that's what they look at. And it's like, oh, no, you you <laughs> really don't get what happened. No, Peter literally walked on, out onto water because Yahushua walked out onto water and Yahushua wanted to show what his power was. But you see how easy it is to take the glory from God and put it on us. Yeah. It's about my finances. It's about me stepping out on my faith. Yeah. Me doing the things and accomplishing what I want to accomplish. That's attractive. Now if somebody come back to you and tell you, oh, no, 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 no. That's pride that you're doing. Yeah. You need to you need to get rid of all that and give all the glory to God. They've been taught all their life. Oh, no, no, no. Me having what I want and then saying, thank you, God, is giving glory right. to God. But you don't got to do no work, though. You ain't got to stop doing nothing. You ain't got to stop doing nothing. <laughs> that ain't giving glory to God. Then when they tell you, oh, wait, no, 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 no. Giving glory to God is obedience. They don't believe that. Real quick, grab, uh, grab uh, John. Grab John, John chapter, make you write them down for me too. Yeah, gotcha. uh, John chapter, uh, uh, what I want, John chapter 15. Real quick, we're just going to do John chapter 15. Give me uh, what verse I want. Let's see, John. I probably want John chapter 15, maybe. Don't, don't write down the verse yet because I don't know what I okay. want. Grab it, maybe verse 6. Okay. Number six, if a, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. Mm -hmm. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit 
so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye, ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. There we go, right? So he just tell you what glorifies the Father, right? Let's read it again, two verses back. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it should be done unto you. Mm -hmm. Herein is my, my Father glorified that. Herein is my Father glorified that what? Ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Right? So he telling you here that he starts off, we didn't read it, but he starts off saying, I am the vine. Mm -hmm. Right? You are the branches. If you produce fruit, then you good. If you don't, I'm going to clip you off and I'm going to burn you. Right? Then he goes on to tell you what it means to bear fruit. But you remain in my love if you keep my commandments. So keeping the commandments bears fruit. In other words, obedience bears fruit. Yahushua Yaw, is telling us that we glorify the Father by bearing fruit. The Father is glorified through our obedience. Yep. Right? But if we think in our mind that the best way to glorify God is to give praise in the form of song and dance, then guess what? When the man go into that church and he just sit down and he don't stand up doing the, the praise and worship, they gonna look at you funny. It's happened to me m multiple times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go into these foreign. I used to go to when I when I when I first started to understand the Bible. I was I was passionate to a fault in my opinion, passionate about trying to convert people and help them see. I thought I was just a hero. Right? I was like, oh. If, if I just had a chance to speak to them, they would change their mind and they'd be able to see the Bible clearly. As I, in my mind, I thought I was the key. I thought I was the one. Right. I thought it was all. A, see, in my mind, I thought I was doing something for God. But it really, in my mind, I, it was all about me. Right. If I just have a chance to speak to these people. So I used to go and I used to go with people to church. I used to tell them, just take me to your church. Take, take me to your church. And I would think, oh, if I just listen to their pastor talk and sit with them in church, then they will trust me enough to where I can explain the Bible to them. And then I can tell them everything that their pastor was saying wrong. And in my mind, this is how I don't know why people didn't try this in the, in the beginning. In my, I'm just as smart as it can be. I don't know why people. I, I, I began to learn after going through so many churches and sitting through so many of these sermons. That one, I'm not welcome in these churches. Because yep. I'm not about to sit here and clap and dance and do all this stuff when I don't know what y'all teach. You remember, you, like they start off, they start off with the song and dance. I'm not going to be in agreement with none of that stuff and I don't know what you're teaching. I need to hear what you're teaching first. Now, if you're teaching something that, that makes some sense, maybe I'll give you a little, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> maybe I'll give you a little clap. You a little praise the Lord. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'll give you a little bit. If it makes some sense, if you teach him, if you teach him something, I, if, I'll give you a little bit, right? But since you start off with, with the song and dance, with the praise and worship, as they call it, I don't have a chance to know what you're teaching, so I'm going to chill. I'm reserved. I'm going to make sure I understand first before I stand in agreement with what's going on. Yeah. And I'm telling you, boy, these Christians, they used to light me up. Because <laughs> I always, I never, I was never the type of guy to sit, like when I went to visit people churches, I was never the type of guy to sit in the back. I'm going to sit somewhere close to the front. So I sit there and they doing their thing. Oh, and Jesus, 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 Jesus loves us. And Jesus, they're all these silly songs, right? They do it. And they look. And then you always got that woman that's on there. And she get to, when she start rapping, that's it. Listen, so y'all don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> when the lady start rapping, and what I mean by rapping is everybody singing, but she break out and she starts saying, See, I don't know about y'all, but Jesus, what Jesus, y'all can sit there, y'all can sit there and not praise, but I'm a praise. And she's doing it to the beat of the song that's going. She, and so she, she's sending bars right at me, right? <laughs> right at me. I don't know if God done anything for you, but he done something for me. So the least I can do is stand up and praise him and do all that. So going crazy, and I'm sitting there like, is she dissing me? 
So I'm sitting there writing my verse. I'm like, oh, I'm going to light this girl up. She had lost her mind. You know, I used to rap. I'm saying, write my stuff. Like, oh, let me get this mic. I'm going to light her up. She don't know. Because I'm taking it personal. Yeah. So I'm looking like, okay. So I started to learn. That's what praise is for them. Yeah. For them, you walking into their church and you not doing praise and worship, there is no higher form of praise for them. For them, like, that's it. That's how you praise God. Yeah. If you think that, and then you read a verse that say, you glorify God by bearing much fruit. And then you learn that bearing much fruit is really obeying okay. God. Yeah. Guess what? That's going to seem like somebody told you to go dip seven times in the Jordan River. Let's go back to Naaman. Right? That's going to feel like somebody dissing you. That's going to feel like, why are you playing with me? Do you know how many better rivers there are than the River Jordan? You can go to that river, that river, that river. Any river you could have told me to go to. But you're going to tell me, I thought you were going to come here, look me in my eye, and say, yo, you got leprosy? Let me call on the name of my God. Let me strike the spot, and it be healed. Naaman couldn't understand that. Christians can't understand that. Muslims can't understand that. Yeah. Hebrew Israelites can't understand that. Jewish people can't understand that. Hinduism, these other crazy folk, they can't understand that because you're explaining it to them what the book is saying. But no, that's not enough. That's not enough. Right? It don't give me enough rise. It don't fit my expectations. The first thing we got to do is change what we expect and stop leaning on the understanding of men yeah. and just get familiar with what the scriptures say. Keep going. And his servants, okay, I'll go up to 12. So, are not about Abana and Farfar, <laughs> rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Mm -hmm. May I not wash in them mm -hmm. and be clean? So he turned and went away in rage. Right? So he mad. Name it mad. He's like, man, it's a waste of my darn time. You send me this mess, it's a waste of my darn time. Watch it. Keep going. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, my father. Now, listen, this is naming servants. Yeah. So, so he, you know, na this is naming people. Yeah. So he walking away, he heated. Like, man, I ought to go kill everybody in Israel right now. He mad. He looking like, man. So some of his servants ran out there. He was like, look, my father, watch it. My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, would thou not have done it? Right? So the, 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 the young boy kind of looking at him like, why, you, why is this making you mad? Like, okay, let me just, let's just think about this. Had the man told you, listen, this is what you must do. Climb to the top of Mount Everest. <laughs> there will be a jelly berry. Nobody has ever seen this berry. When you see it, it's going to look like a gray and purple berry. You pick it off. You squeeze it in your left hand. Then smash it into your right. It's very important. <laughs> Look, show you the right hand. Squeeze it into your left hand. Smash it into your right. He looking like, oh, now I'm really confused, right? <laughs> then you look, after you do that, do not wash your hands. You must climb all the way back down Mount Everest without using your hands one time. Now you're looking like, okay, God is in this. <laughs> right? Because that's how our minds work. Yeah. That's the same reason when I sit here and just teach the word. Yeah. Ain't nobody about to watch this darn video. We ain't got time for this. Like Who's gonna sit here and watch somebody just tell us what the Bible says? Oh my god, it's boring. However, Max, come on up here. <laughs> you gotta come over here like you in a wheelchair though. You know what I'm saying? No, you know what I'm saying? Like the cat daddy dance. Alright, uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, Max, y'all can't see Max. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but Max, Max ain't here. I'm picking Max up. The reason why I'm picking him up, because he's never walked in his life. I'm going I'm to put him down right now. Stand up straight. The Lord heals your leg. Stand up. Put your neck up, boy, so the people can see you. His neck didn't work either. You know what I'm saying? But look, move your neck left and right. Mm -hmm. Oh, God! Listen, we cut that, make it a clip. Yeah. Give me a little cloth. I got it. All I got. Look, <laughs> this, this is the same cloth. It was dug out of Jerusalem in 1953, <laughs> hidden for thousands of years. We found the cloth. We had to escape Jerusalem because they didn't want us to do it. Look, let me tell you something. We had to escape Jerusalem. This is top secret. Max, where are you going? 
Boy, I just taught you how to walk. You wouldn't even be able to do that if it wasn't for me. You stand there until I'm done. <laughs> this is the cloth. All you got to do, look, all it takes is slapping somebody with a cloth and you out of here. Yeah. I'm talking like we get money. Slap with the cloth. Now go walk. <laughs> oh, he's still walking. Then you got to take his wheelchair and you got to like throw it down the stairs. You got to just do something ridiculous. Take the way he doesn't need this anymore. Throw it down the stairs. I'm telling we are out of here. We to the next level. Joel Osteen, who? You know what I'm talking about? We out of here if we do that. Because that's what people want to see. Yeah. That's what people want to see. That's why Naaman is sitting there like, no, nah, man, you gave me some regular stuff to do. And you just sent it to me in a message. I wanted you to talk to me face to face. What do we think about God? Yeah. Most of our first prayers is God. If you speak to me or if you show me this or if you show yourself to me, we want God to directly interact with us. Guess what? I ain't trying to read out no Bible. That's what they did to him. They sent him a message. They sent a messenger. No, I want to talk to the real man. I want to hear it secondhand. Naaman didn't like that. We don't like that. A lot of us won't admit it, but we don't like that either. That's why a lot of people don't believe. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. no, nah, man, come talk to me because we think too much of ourselves. Yeah. We got to humble ourselves. Right? We got to bring ourselves low. You got to understand that you are nothing. Like, you, the most high God looks at you as an unprofitable servant. In other words, an unprofitable servant is somebody you can't do anything for me. Yeah. That's how God look at us. Once you get that into your head, then it's just like, oh, okay. Okay, got it. Let me just do what the man say, because all this at the end of the day is for me. All I got to do is stop trying to do it for me. That's it. If I look at myself that I can't do nothing for him, so the least I can do is try to do something for him, if that's my mindset, then I right, It's going to work out for me in the end anyway. But no, nah, we still be thinking about, oh, I'm the king Israelite, so I'm going to stand on the corner and I'm going to yell at all the people and tell them, Jesus is a liar. That's Caesar Begoria or whatever his name is. You know what I'm saying? It's that nothing. Get to telling these people all this stuff ruining their day. They out here trying to sin in peace. You know what I'm talking about? Why are you messing with these people? These Christians handing out pamphlets. You know what I'm saying? Hey, brother, uh, have you ever heard of Jesus Christ? <laughs> well, here, why don't you take this and read it later? Yeah. Right? You know what I'm saying? Like, what's wrong? Why are you messing with people? Leave these people alone. Yeah. Got these Mormons knocking at your darn door. You got to hide from the Mormons. <laughs> well, hi. How you doing? Uh, is your mom home? You darn pedophile. Why don't you get away from my darn door? These people are nasty and they weird. Keep going. Let's see. <clears throat> and his servants came near and, and spake unto him and said, My father, if the, the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, mm -hmm. wouldst thou not have done it? Mm -hmm. How much rather than when he says to thee, Wash and be clean? Mm -hmm. Then went, went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. Mm hmm and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child. Like unto the flesh of a little child. So he dipped how many times? Seven. He dipped seven times in the Jordan, right? After his, after his servant convinced his servant came to him and was like, if he told you to do something wild, crazy, you know you would have did it. Why don't you just at least try it? You know what I'm saying? It don't make no sense. Just try it. What's the, what's the big deal? So he go down. He is like, man, I'm going to try this stupid stuff. Wasting my darn time. He dipping that thing seven times. Probably did like this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Dipped in that thing seven times. Yeah. That boy got up after the seventh time. Flesh was like a little baby flesh. Skin smooth, looking good. That boy looking like, well, that's it. Because you know what happened to him? He was born again. Mm -hmm. He was baptized. Yeah, baptized. And born again. That's what that symbolizes for us. Right? Keep going. Watch this. You'll see. And he was clean. Mm -hmm. And he returned to the man of God, he and all his company, and came and stood before him. Mm -hmm. And he said, Behold, now I know that there is a God, there is no God in all the earth, but in Israel. Watch what he just said. He said, Now I know that there is there no God exists. <laughs> Remember, Elisha said, Listen, go ahead and send him my way because uh he going to know it's a God in Israel. That's all the, Alicia, 
He wasn't even talking about the other guy. All these other guys, he wasn't even trying to do nothing to them. He had just said, I just want to know it's also a God in Israel, right? Naaman said, oh, now I know all these other gods is fake. This the only real one. Keep going, watch this. No. All you got to do is trust the word, man. You trust the word and just obey it. We be resisting it like, man, I ain't doing this. It's simple. This, that, nothing. It's doing this. I ain't going to do nothing. But why don't you just try it? Yeah. If somebody told you you do something crazy, you do it. Why don't you just try the simple stuff? Just, you know, stop saying it. Right? If I told you to do something wild, they be telling y'all to do wild stuff. Yeah. Wild stuff. Go, go. You know what I'm saying? They tell these Muslims, listen, go in the name of uh, what they call it when they go to war? Uh, jihad. In the name of jihad, go and and blow yourself up. Yeah, they do be doing that. What you gonna get if you blow yourself up? Like 15 wives in, in the afterlife or something crazy like that. You get 10 wives or something like that in the afterlife they be telling them, That's right? That's crazy. And so they go and blow themselves up. You would do that instead of just living your life without cussing, lying, cheating, stealing, you know what I'm saying? Without getting drunk. Like, don't look. you rather go kill yourself than to stop cussing and stop cheating and stop killing people. Because that's the mindset of people. Go ahead. Now, therefore, I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. Mm -hmm. But he said, as the Lord liveth be before whom I stand, I will receive none. And he urged him to take it. Yeah, so Elisha said, I don't want to get, right? And so Naaman's like, no, please, you have to take. You know how people want to you know, show gratitude. He's like, no, you have to take it. Watch this. <clears throat> And Naaman said, shall there not then, I pray thee, be given to the, thy servant two mules, two mules burden of earth, of the earth? <clears throat> For thy servant will henceforth off, offer neither burnt offerings nor sacrifice unto other gods, but unto the Lord. Right. So he said, listen, from now on, he said, listen, if you're not going to take the gifts, give them to your servants, to Elisha's servants. Then he said, because from now on, I will never make a sacrifice to any other god. Or a burnt offering of any type to any other God. He's telling them, I'm dedicating myself to your God from now on. Right? Watch this. This is a Gentile. Right? This is somebody from Syria. He ain't got nothing to do with Israelites. Yeah. Right? Mm. Watch this. In this thing, the Lord pardon thy servant. Right? That when my master go, go into the house of Ramon to worship there, and hence, and he leaneth on my hand, I by myself into, in the house of Remen. Ramon, when I bow, bow down myself into the house of Ramon, the Lord pardon thy servant in this thing. Right? So he's saying, listen, only the one thing I just need, the most I got to look out for me. I got a boss. And I'm going to, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I carry him up. You know what I'm saying? He leaned on my hand. And I bow down for him to lean on my hand. He's like, now look, when I do that in the house of Ramon, it ain't like I'm trying to worship that, you know what I'm saying, Ramon, the guy Ramon. I'm not trying. That's not what I'm trying to do. You know what I'm saying? Just procedural, and I ain't trying to go against my boss. He's like, let the Lord pardon me in that one thing. Right? So he's trying to make it clear, like, look, I'm dedicated to the man. Now, it might look a little funny because I got to go in there. I got a job to do this, that, another, and I ain't trying to quit my job. You know what I'm saying? But doing the best I can. Right? This is a man who, who don't got the scripture. Yeah. He don't know what all the rules is. He just trying to show faith. That's all it take. That's all it take. People be feeling like you got to know the whole book. No. You know whatever part you know, just do what it say. And even if it's wrong, like what he doing is still wrong. Yeah. Right? It's still wrong. But even if it's wrong, the most high God with the faith, of, based off of what you know, you doing the best you can. The most high God will reveal more to you. That's how he works. He reveals to you based off of your obedience. People go wrong when they disobey. When you disobey, he closes off. Okay, let me prove it. Just because y'all y'all think I made that stuff up. So, what we got? We're going to go to John chapter, what, 14 or 7? Let's try John chapter 7, verse 14. And after, if that's not it, then it's going to be John chapter 14, verse 7. It's going to be one or two. John chapter 7, verse 14. It ain't chapter 7, verse 14. Go to John chapter 14, verse 7. Yeah, it can't be. 
Oh, wait, hold on. Well, you can read it and go back over. Yeah, let's let's do 14 verse 7 real quick. I actually think it might be 7. 14, 14 7. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. And mm -hmm. from henceforth, ye know him and have seen him. Mm -hmm. And it goes down. Uh, so Philip said unto him. No, that's not it. Okay. So go to uh, John chapter 7, verse 14. Now about now about the midst of the feast of Yahushua went up into the temple and taught. Uh huh. And the Jews marveled, saying, "How knoweth this man the letters, having never learned?" Right. So he's looking like, how does he know the scripture so well? But I've never seen him in our classes. Like we've never taught him. So he's like he's never learned it, but he know the scriptures well. That boy know that thing. Switching through them. How does he know? But he never learned. Watch this. And Yahushua answered him and said, my doctrine is not mine, but his, his that sent me. Mm -hmm. If any man would do his will, he if shall. If any man will do his will, watch this. He shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. So if you do what the most high God say, he will make it clear what the truth is. So if you start with just a small thing, like, okay. You know what I'm saying? Somebody gave me a Bible, but it only got the New Testament in it and Psalms and Proverbs. But that's not appropriate, right? You know, there's no way that you can know everything you're going to need to know with that. But if you read that and you saw where it say, hey, stop doing this or you should start doing this and live like this, this, that, and that. And all the things that you saw, you said, oh, well, I saw it. I'm going to do it from now on. It may not be complete. Your life may not be all the way right. And you may not have a perfect understanding. But guess what? Based off of that, the most high God is going to say, oh, okay, we're here. Now you stumbled on the Bible with the, the full Bible and the full Old Testament. Then you're going to start reading that and you're going to get a little piece and be like, man, I don't understand all of it, but I know it's safe. Stop, stop doing this and start keeping the Sabbath. Then you start keeping the Sabbath. Like, okay, no, you got to keep the Sabbath because that's what it's say. Then the most high God is going to introduce you to more information. Then you're like, oh, well, Yahushua. Oh, I got to do what Yahushua did. Then he's going to introduce you to more information. It, that's how it works. Let me go to Romans. Go to Romans chapter 1, verse, um, let's do Romans chapter 1, maybe verse 10. Romans verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 10. I'm going to show you the other side of it. Because that's Yahushua telling you, if you do his will, then you'll know the truth. Right? He will reveal it to you because you're doing his will. Right? This is the other side of it. Watch this. Romans. It's Romans chapter 10. I'm, I'm sorry, ver, chapter 1, verse 10. Romans chapter 1, verse 10. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Making requests, if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of, of God to come. Jump down to and maybe 15. 15? Okay. So as much as. as and so as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Messiah, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, mm -hmm. to the Jew first and also to, to the Greek. Mm -hmm. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Mm hmm. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. Right there. Look. So the wrath of God is revealed from heaven to all ungodliness. For all ungodliness. Watch this. In other words, God is going to judge from the sky everything that is ungodly is what he's trying to say. He's saying, he's saying it's about to be revealed. Watch this. And the righteous and uh for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men mm -hmm. who hold the truth in unrighteousness. He said they hold the truth in unrighteousness. In other words, I know the truth, but I'm lying about it because I want to keep living the way I want to live. Right? So I know that, well, that stuff that Brother Phil be talking about, man, I know it's some truth to that stuff, but I'm going to pretend like it ain't and keep arguing with him because I don't want to change how I'm living. And I don't want to feel bad about it in front of people. Right. 
So that's what he's talking about. Keep watching, keep going. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. Mm -hmm. For God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being mm -hmm. understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, mm -hmm. so that they are without excuse. Mm -hmm. In other words, he's saying you could look around and see it's a God, right? That's actually that's actually how when I when I was conflicted, I used to you know what I'm saying I used to be a Christian, and then I watched a documentary, and then the documentary tore down Christianity, pointed out all the stuff in Christianity, all the traditions that came from other ancient religions and all these other ancient pagan gods. So when I saw that, and I looked it up for myself, and I'm like, dang, Christmas, December 25th, that do come from this. And Easter, that do come from that. I didn't realize that I couldn't find nothing in the Bible that came from something else. You know what I'm saying? Only thing I could find is all these little traditions on top of it. But in my mind, all of it was Christianity, and all of it must have been in the Bible because all of it's Christianity. I didn't know the Bible at the time. You know what I'm saying? So I, I broke away, and I was like, well, I don't believe nothing. But one thing I always looked around, and I was like, but all this ain't an accident. And it can't be an accident that, that three of the top five religions all are based off of the Old Testament. Like, that can't be an accident. So that's the way I looked at it. I was looking like, okay, I know there's a God just because look at everything. Like, it's like, you know what I'm saying? At the time, I was, I was learning in college about the circular system, uh, the circular, the, was it circular system, whatever it's called, you know what I'm saying? And your brain and how intricate it was. And I was just looking at, they were trying to teach me that it was all evolution. It was just like, oh, well, this stuff just happened or, as an accident. So I'm like, you mean to tell me everyone's body accidentally developed arms on one side and the other side at the same time and they happen to be matched <laughs> ears like my ear accidentally developed on this side and on this side on the accident and it's symmetric it's like stop like who are you kidding you know what i'm saying this is a design it's clear like stop it just stop it you know what i'm saying it's like you wouldn't you wouldn't nobody would expect to go to antarctica and they say there's never been a human being down here in all of history <laughs> right but you see a, you see a, you see a, a, you see logs and you see a fire burning on top of it and a pot on top of that. You would never look at that and be like, that naturally occurred over millions and millions of years. You look at that and be like, oh, somebody over here. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Who here? It's like you just, you, you know when something, you know what I mean? So it's like people look at us and they just say stupid stuff to it. But I, you know what I'm saying? I was like, I think the most I got, cause I'm like, I was just never all the way stupid. I was like kind of stupid. I wasn't all the way stupid. So I was looking there like, I know there is a God. So look at all the religions. Okay, most of the religions, most of the people in the world that, that are religious is based on what they got from the Old Testament. So I was like, all right, forget Christianity, forget Muslims, forget Judaism. But let me just read the Old Testament. And that's how I started. I read the Old Testament and read it again and read it again. And I'm like, I don't know. The New Testament is legit too. Read the New Testament. I was like, okay, I see what it is. Let me stop calling myself any of this stuff. I'm going to call myself what the book called me. The book called me a disciple. Right? Book called me a disciple. Book called me a saint. You know what I'm saying? I'm not about to sit here and call these people. I'm going to call myself a darn Christian. Uh, no, 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 no. One call part myself of, a darn Muslim. In one part, then they tell he call, uh, he think, say, uh, Moses my disciple at one point. Am I tripping? Mm -hmm. That's what you say. You call, you call disciples. That's what we all call. Keep going. Watch this. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, still Romans 1 and 15. You want me to keep reading now? Uh, we should be past 15 now, right? We had, uh, we had, uh, he should, should be talking about the invisible things of the world. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> what verse is that? 20. Uh, 20. 20? Yeah. This is uh, Romans chapter uh, 1, verse 20. Watch the book, sir. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are, are made manifest. That means made obvious, right? Yeah. Keep going. Are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even as his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Mm -hmm. Because that when they knew God, they look, glorified him not. As he God. said, look, even when they knew God in their mind, because they hold on to the truth and want to keep, keep on being in disobedience. Now they knew the truth. You got to understand what this is saying. I knew it was something real. But I'm resisting it. 
I want to pretend like I don't know so I can keep justified in what I'm doing. So because I did that, look what happened to him. <clears throat> because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination. Mm -hmm. And their foolish heart was darkened. Their foolish heart was darkened. In other words, their thoughts were darkened. In other words, they became stupid. Watch this. Keep going. Professing themselves to be wise, mm -hmm. they became fools. They became stupid. Watch this. Keep going. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man. So then they start worshiping idols. Keep going. Watch this. this listen, this is exactly what the, the trail of Christianity did. Christianity started from us, disciples. We tried to teach them. They started off with the true knowledge of God. Then they began to do all this other stuff. They start mixing it with traditions. Then they start being disobedient. So then knowing God, they didn't glorify God. How do you glorify God? Obedience. Obedient. So they didn't glorify God as God. So then they would turn foolish and they start worshiping idols. So now if you go to Rome now, they got idols of all the 12 disciples. They got pictures of Jesus everywhere. That is idolatry. Yep. They got crosses. All he did, all that's idolatry. Clear idolatry. Those are graven images. No way around it, right? But that's what happens. Look, keep going. And to the birds. You even look at the Muslims. Everybody, look, nobody get a pass. Yep. You look at the Muslims, right? The Muslims, they started off being taught our God. Yep. They took it. They tried to freaking see it, change it, throw it in the pot, mix it up a little bit. And they came out with Mohammed, right? And Mohammed started telling them, you know what? There's a different way to do this thing. So now what do they do? Every year, they all try to go to Mecca. And they crowd around this thing. And it's a big old thing that looked like, you know what I'm saying? I ain't even going to tell y'all what it looked like because it's vulgar. But it looked like some one of the women parts. Wow. And then they all try to rush it. It's a big old thing. It's called the Black Stone. Right? You look it up on Google. It's the black stone. They all try to look at it and they all try to get it and they all try to touch it or kiss it. Right? All of them. They try to touch it and kiss it. It's a big old crowd. Not everybody get a chance to touch it because you know what I'm saying? It don't be at the the I forget what they call it, but it's a it's a time of the year where they all go on a jihad or something like that. I forget what they call that mess. But they go and they circle around this thing, they take their journey, they circle around this thing. Trying to get a chance just to touch this thing. That is idolatry. Idolatry. The Hebrew Israelites, the Jewish folks, they got the star David and all that stuff. That is idolatry. Everybody can get touched. Nobody gets spared. The only way you get spared is do what the man said. Watch this. Keep going. And a four-footed beast and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to the uncleanness through the, the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the, cre the creature more than the creator, uh -huh. who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Now look at what's happening, right? Mm -hmm. Even in ancient Rome, right? These things were happening and they started to have these wild orgies and they even start giving their kids to professors. Yep. They gave young kids to professors to have their way with them sexually. This was a part of the culture in Rome, ancient Rome. And so then you fast forward, right? That stuff got stopped to some degree and then look at us now. <laughs> you got the Protestant churches. Yeah. They start doing whatever they want. Yep. You got these people first. They fight for gay marriage. Yep. And what, what a lot of people on the other side of that who didn't want gay marriage would say, you know what? You know what's going to end up happening? These people are going to go wild. You give them a little end, they're going to take a mile. What happened? They get gay marriage, and now they take little kids and they try to turn them into trans, trans things, whatever yeah. they call it. Yeah. Right? They tell little kids it's sad. Oh, you know what? You know what? 
You just be who you want to be. Do you feel comfortable in your gender? They ain't even consulting the parents. Nope. The parents don't got no say. Because that's what the book is telling you. When you keep playing with God and you know you should be doing the truth and you don't do it and pretend like, oh, well, I don't know. I mean, maybe uh, I just I just worship the universe or I just want the universe. The universe has to reveal it to me and all that. But, you know, deep down, man, I know it's a God. I just don't be one. You know what I'm saying? I don't be one to do it. The Christians say or I don't be one to do it. The Hebrew Israelites say or I don't be one to do it. Bro, Phil say, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, oh, well, I ain't going to go with it. When you do that, your mind get given over to all of this wild, crazy, vile stuff. And you end up lost. So I say all that to just say there's two sides to it. If you obey him, more will be revealed to you. Just like Naaman. Naaman is just looking like, man, look, let me just start with this. I'm a dip inside of the water. I dip inside of the water. You know what? I know it's only one God. Right? That's it. It ain't a whole bunch of them. I just know it's one guy. Right? Then he said, you know what? I ain't going to worship any other gods. But you got to forgive me with this, this Ramon thing. You know what I'm saying? That boy Ramon, you know what I'm saying? I ain't worshiping him. I might bow down in his temple, but I ain't worshiping him. Right? Well, the most I got to reveal more to him later. But if Naaman were to not obey the peace that he knew, then he would be left in darkness. And that's what we have to get through our thick brains, right? Is that we have to obey what we do know. You ain't got to try to know it all. You know what I'm saying? Just whatever you do know, whatever you believe, whatever you look at from the book, obey that, right? Most I got to start revealing more to you over time. He'll give you a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. All right, we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, and pick up pick up the rest of uh, chapter five, second second Kings chapter five next week. But any questions? All right, let's pray out.